The first parish meeting house is a historic colonial meeting house in Biddeford, Maine. Built in 1758 by Nathaniel Perkins, a local master builder, it is the oldest public building in the city and is one of the oldest buildings of its type in the state. It served as a combined church and town hall until 1840. Many important events happened here, including the trial of Jeremiah Hill for heresy on May 2nd, 1793. However, acquitted, Jeremiah was a prominent part of the Meeting House's history and was one of the chosen to oversee the construction of the Colonial Meeting House. It was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1972. It's now owned by the Biddeford Historic Society. This single-story, wood-framed structure with high front-facing gable roof and granite foundation. It is speculated that this granite might have something to do with the peculiar sounds and odd occurrences that have been being reported recently. The stone tape theory is the belief that some hauntings are like tape recordings. The idea that during emotional or traumatic events as well as positive events in history can be projected in the form of energy recorded onto rocks and other items and replayed under certain conditions. The Meeting House was an important site in the community during the American Revolutionary War, when local organizing activities were held here. Families would purchase a specific pew, which is still evident today by the personalized shelves, carpeting, and kneeling benches. All of the historic events and those strong emotions being recorded onto this location. Could it be possible these noises reported recently are evidence of ghostly manifestations? We travel to this location to try to document proof of the paranormal. Hello, Spooksters. We are getting ready to head over to a meeting house that I was contacted about. Um, a lady from the Biddeford Historic Society told me that she had the keys to a 1759 uh, parish, first parish meeting house. Now, this has never been investigated by any investigators, so I'm really excited. We're heading over to do a little bit of droning and possibly do an investigation, so we'll see what happens. All right, we just made it to the meeting house, the Biddeford First Parish Meeting House, historical site, constructed in 1759, guys. Look at the pretty flowers. That's the front of the building. Here we go. Now we are officially the first people allowed to actually investigate in here and the door is wide open for us. Oh, it's a creepy hallway down this way. Oh, look at the... Yeah, yeah. There's a resource area. That's really cool. It's a meeting house first in the original parish. That's really cool. Uh, I don't know. Does it feel the energy? Yeah, no, I feel it.
old furniture in here. Holy cow. This is really neat. We might get some. I'm already, I got goosebumps. It's weird. Yeah, I'm getting chills. Yeah, no, I've got the chills. And I don't normally, like, there's, a, I've been to actual haunted locations um, and not felt that. So. Oh, yeah, well, we've been to quite a there's few. There's definitely though. something going on here. This is really neat. Mm. Let's even get the, wow, there's, like, print in the velvet. So if we see anything, hear anything while we're talking, we'll be able to hopefully re replay it. All right, so what do you know about this place? I'm so excited. Right. If we want to warm the building, someone has to come early in the morning and start that just to get it into the 60s. In the uh, oh my gosh, I can imagine. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, a few things that I think you might find interesting. So um, around here, we have a chart of, you know, back in those days, people bought their pew. That was, it was a thing. The, oh, wow. The pew, these were the owners of the pews in 1840. We're trying to go back even older, but this is what we have now. And coincidentally, these last names are still probably some of the more common last names in Biddeford today. Right. So they're descendants. That's fantastic. And if you look at the pews, some have different, um, you know, you could do with your pew what you wanted. So one here, for example, has a little carpet. That's so awesome. These are so cool. This oh, one has wow. A bit of carpet. Its own carpeting. Like they'd actually de like put their own belongings in here. So yes. when they came for their meetings and their, uh, did they do church stuff here too? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's fantastic. And that would have been their footstool. Wow, and I here, like have the chills right now for some reason, and I don't normally get that. Well, a lot of people think with a meeting house this old, they'll ask, well, did you have a witch trial there? Right. No, we did not have a witch trial here, but we did have a very interesting heresy trial in 1789, and uh, there's a large sign over there about the gentleman who was accused. He was acquitted, however, that had to be a very emotional Right, of course. And terrifying meeting. Oh, yeah. In this house at that time. And interestingly, Jeremiah Hill, the accused, ended up um, forming another church across town shortly thereafter. <laughs> and then a couple of very interesting things that occurred here have to do with the revolution. So in 1774, when King George was pronouncing enormous taxes after the Tea Party, and saying you have to repay for all the tea you threw in the harbor in Boston. Um, there was a meeting here to decide would the citizens of Biddeford prefer to stay under King George or put all of their heart, belongings, and everything towards independence. And it was not a unanimous vote here that day. That was very emotional. We actually reenacted it here last weekend. When the Declaration of Independence was finally signed, of course, you didn't have the internet, or you couldn't announce on television that the declarations have been signed. So someone would ride from town to town and read them. And the first reading in what is now Maine was held here. And I'm sure people were very excited. Yeah. And came from miles around. Yeah. You to can hear just this read. you can just feel like something important happened here, and like you feel I feel energy like people thought of this as almost like a second part of their home. Like they came here religiously, so it yes. became part of their life. Yes. It's been a very long time since any church services were held here. A lot of civic events were held here, town meetings mm -hmm. and so forth. But um, it has not been a church for a very long time. And we've used it for local, historically um, interesting events, but um, it, 
it doesn't look like a church to most people's minds. Right, anymore. right. There's no statues. There's no stained glass. No. Nope. It's very colonial. No ornamentation. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's a different that, feeling from a, like a normal it. church. I like it. Very cool. And there's even like a little balcony up there. And there is a balcony you can get up from either side. Oh yeah, I love it's that. It's a really narrow staircase. Absolutely love it. This is just really, really awesome. Thank you so much for allowing us to come in. I've been so excited. I like it. Yeah. Even if, if nothing of any kind happens. It's yeah, still fantastic. Yeah. I'm a historical buff, not just, it. not just ghosties for me. I'm happy just yes. to, to see the old buildings and the, I'm going to get a close up of this lantern here. Yeah, I love, I love just being able to see the old pews and like touch the old yes. wood. Yes. And just like feel the history mm. of there. That was a noise not near me. That was down at the end. It was. Although my hand doesn't touch the door, it is possible that my body weight on the floor might have been responsible for the door closing. But just maybe it was a past pew owner trying to tell me this was their pew. See the old pews and like touch the Yes. Yes, and just like feel the history yeah, from there. That was a noise not near me. That was down at the end. It was. And just like feel the history yeah, from there. And just like feel the history yeah, from there. That must have been a door. One of the no, doors. Moved, no, it wasn't the one that you were on, and I wasn't no, touching it was, anything. It was farther, I heard it the yeah, it was down, down this way. If there's somebody here, I mean no disrespect if I was in your pew. Did you hear the creaking? All right, so we actually were hearing some noises in here, so I think we're going to pull out like the ovalis and stuff and maybe see if we can figure out which direction, maybe which pew um, might have some energy or somebody with it. I felt like I was intruding <laughs> when I walked because I went into that pew to look at the lantern. Which pew is that actually? Let's find out. Gonna... Let's see. Yes, it was right here. I was looking in this one right here. Is this open or closed? Um, I don't know, but I was right here. So this one, yeah. number, what is it? Next four. Number 42. Oh, 42, I'm sorry. I knew I saw four. Pew number 42. William Hill. William Hill's pew. He's the one with the oh, wow. so the a member trial. of the family from the trial. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And there's even he's got his little kneeling thing there. Wow. And that's funny. So a descendant of Jeremiah Hill here. Brother, brother possibly. Yeah. Or, or possibly was originally Jeremiah's pew that we just don't know yet. Right. Might have originally been Jeremiah's. Wow, that's funny because I literally walked right up to the lantern to get shots of the lantern. But this is, well, coincidentally, it's the pew where we had a window break recently. So we, oh, yeah. From the inside or outside? Do I don't you know. know. Oh, I don't okay. know. We wrote it off to the lawnmower. But right. We don't but know. still, yeah. Oh, interesting. I was just curious if it may have come from inside. But or that's, if it was, uh, that's still like fascinating to me. Like which way the, the break me. might have gone in. I don't know if glass was found inside or outside. Honestly, I wasn't. Hmm. Hmm. I was just curious. 
All right, so we have our meters. What's causing it to peak out? Do you see that? It's like not going away. Well, hold on, let's try this one. Make sure this isn't defective. It shouldn't be. No, I know, but sometimes they... It's peeking out like right here. And I just reset this last one. I don't understand why that one's peeking. Oh. They're so from a different time period that they're not even going to understand what this is. And the thing is, is if you talk to spirits and they turn this on, they're going to shy away from you if they don't know what it is. So, um, anybody who's here with us, my name is Sarah, and um, obviously times are a little different than back when this place was used in the 17 and 1800s as a meeting house, but we still feel your presence and we still know that possibly there might be somebody here with us. Uh, maybe even somebody uh, associated with Jeremiah Hill. So this box in my hand is a communication radio. Um, sometimes we have trouble hearing you in person because of the veil between us. So if you use your energy and use your voice to try to speak through this device, we just might be able to hear your message. So I'm going to turn it on and it's going to be a little annoying, it's going to make a little bit of noise, but I assure you that that's going to make it so we can actually hear what you have to say. Give me a second to get this to your frequency. Keep in mind sometimes we cannot get any voices as well, like this could sit in a room for 35 minutes with no voices. I was sitting over at number 42. <laughs> Does the name Ameline mean anything to anyone? Ameline? A M E L I N E. If it'll focus. Alright, I'm gonna walk over to number 42. Yeah, Ameline maybe? Stop here. Did you hear that? Whoa. Stop here. Yeah, it did. And we'll just when you said when it said that, the uh, meter over here was going off. Sarah, the meter's going off over here. The uh, the K2 was going off when it said stop. The meter started going. A female too. Is your name Ameline? Okay. I, Ameline? I can't Understand. pronounce. Understand what? That was a male. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and walk over to number 43. Was there somebody named Ameline here? Ameline? I could be butchering the, the pronunciation there. I heard another woman come through, but I couldn't. Yeah, I'm thinking Ameline, A Ameline, Ameline. Hmm. We're just trying to communicate with anybody who's here. Could you please speak to her through that box? We just want to know if you have a message. I'm not sure what that one was. Interesting. May I sit here? Farmer's applet. I don't know what A P P L E T means. Never heard that one. Applet. Could I stay here? Okay. 
We're just trying to connect with you. Are you okay with us being here? Can you say your name? We're just trying to connect to any of the families here. What did that just say? Palace and Raid. That almost sounded kind of like a last name. Calendar. Calendar. Richard. Richard. Lightning. Huh. Ooh, I just got a wicked chill over here. Ooh, right here. I just got hit by major energy. Yeah, it's the voices underneath. I hear him. He's speaking to you. Pendant. Nation. Nation. Pendant. Who's Richard? I'm the side. Who are you? I heard Richard, right? Right in there? Uh -oh. Yeah. Huh. David. Oh. Jonathan. Jonathan? Like a woman saying Jonathan? There's a noise over in that pew. You don't need to be afraid or upset that we're here. We're just trying to communicate with you. We mean no harm, we promise. I noticed that up on the balcony too, the whole railing is like that for people to put their little books and like their scriptures and their little Bibles. Absolutely fascinating. I really just can't get over how beautiful it is here. Like just that it's so original, you know? It's hard to find places that are actually kept in such good condition, especially from the 1700s. This has just been such a treat. gotten so quiet now like they were they were interested at first and I think now we've kind of overstayed our welcome <laughs> you know I could definitely feel them when we first got here <clears throat> the energy that is because even if they're not actively spirits here they leave an imprint of themselves you know what I mean it's like an echo Kind of like a recording of energy that was here. So even if they're not able to connect with me one on one by actually like, wow, that was weird. See, I don't know if it was me walking though, because I heard it over there. It's hard to say. But you definitely hear some noises. I'm telling you in the beginning when that door on 42 moved, that was legit, I really think. And I really do think we have a, a voice on that recorder. In fact, now that it's quieted down, I'm gonna try one more session. I just started this recorder again. We heard you earlier and we would love to hear from you and hear your voice. Who was it that was making noises earlier? This device in my hand has a red dot. This is so I can actually hear your voice. Waiting on the cars. Was there somebody over by booth number 42, pew number 42? Can you at least tell us which booth was yours?
We believe we felt you and heard you earlier. Can you tell me your name? I am about to ask a question that we later discover my digital recorder captured a Class A EVP. Not captured on the camera's audio, which would have captured anyone in the room speaking. Who was it that was making noises earlier over by those booths over there? Did you break the window? I just started this recorder again. We heard you earlier and we would love to hear from you and hear your voice. I think I just heard Jeremiah. Here is the EVP directly from the recorder. We believe we felt you and heard you earlier. Can you tell me your name? Who was it that was making noises earlier over by those booths over there? Did you break the window? When it gets close to the part, I'll put it to you. down by your shoulder and then back up. Nice. I heard that. That's Jeremiah, right? That's not an easy Sarah. name. Sarah, and while you were leaning in, there was what looked like a shadow against that wall slowly move off to the left towards the middle of the room. So when we started this and she sat down, you had an orb come over your shoulder and back up. And then when you were leaned in just now, you could see the color. Uh, and I was waiting. I was watching the cars go by to see if it was a reflection of the cars. Absolutely. And I'm telling you, that's not it. I don't and think it was the, the cars. that's the second one. I'm telling you, there was another voice when I asked what the building was used for. It sounded like somebody said meetings. But I heard that, Jeremiah. That sounded like Jeremiah. It didn't sound like a man. No, it sounded it like, like a woman's. Woman. Yeah. I wonder if maybe a girl or wife or talking to us earlier when she said stop here or something when you were walking whether it's something or whether it's not something um, the other night we had a board meeting we were all board members of probably eight or nine of us sitting in different pews talking the door was shut and twice we heard a sound I'm gonna try to make this is what it sounded like to me it was like a like a drag and a thump. And our president got up twice, came back, looked around, the door hadn't opened. We, we don't know. He joked. <laughs> he joked ghosts. Yep. Um, it was very loud, I can tell you that. That's insane. It's clear this building still holds on to some secrets. 
Our short time spent here yielded some compelling evidence. This meeting house may, in fact, be visited by spirits from the past. I look forward to investigating again.